Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes everywhere online. In today's video, I want to share with you how I got my recently constructed uh, wall quilt on the wall behind me. We make these projects, we get through with them, and we're like, well, what do I do with it now? And people have no idea. They might throw it on the back of a couch, on the back of a chair, something like that. Well, I wanted to display mine as an actual wall quilt, which is what I've done behind me. So there are a lot of methods and you can sew like a sleeve on the back side of your quilt. You can do like little corner tabs. There are different things that you can do in terms of sewing a little extra piece onto the back side that will then allow you to insert the dowel and then hang your quilt. I've made some with the sleeves and done this and done that. It's a little bit of a rigmarole to get them on there and you wind up with a situation a lot of times, especially in a bigger piece where uh, if you're not like all the way to the corners, your top corners can start to droop and that's not a good look. You want your quilt to be as uh, square or rectangular, as geometric as possible in other words. So I came up with a really simple way to hang all of my stuff and this is what I've been doing and I thought I would share it with you today. So the wall behind me is basically what you would call a feature wall and it's actually a fireplace uh, but i'm using it as my uh, feature wall to show behind me when i film videos for you and it's just kind of been still in the same setup same mindset as it was when i used this room as my living room now i use it as my uh, youtube space my photography area and uh, I wanted to have a place to display projects and quilts and things like that uh, behind me as I'm talking to you. So anyway, let me show you how I got this project, which by the way, is the Moda Love Charm quilt pattern. And they had like a sewing challenge, I think it was in January, maybe February, I think it was January. Um, it was earlier this year. And they did it on Instagram and uh, basically everybody just uh, got together and we all sewed these uh, wall quilts together. I wound up making two. The second one I put in my bedroom, uh, but this one I wanted out here because it's just, I'm looking at it in the monitor. I mean, it's so graphic. You can really get the sense of that. Uh, it's almost like a carpenter star. It's not quite a carpenter star, but it's close. I did a blog post uh, on this project, which I will link for you in the description below. And you can kind of see um, the mindset that I took in uh, constructing this project and how I quilted it and all that type of stuff, as well as a link over to the pattern, which is a free pattern uh, from Moda. And I found the easiest way to access it is to go onto the <laughs> Fat Quarter Shop website. And that's where I've linked you to from the blog post. It took me a few tries to get the right combination of, of things to get these larger wall quilts on the wall because that thing is pretty big. I think it's almost uh, 42 inches or so across. It's pretty big. I have to measure it and uh, let's do that right now. Okay, it's about 34 inches across. Uh, so it's, it's pretty big and even though it's small in terms of a quilting project, it gets pretty heavy. And the longer these things hang on the wall, the more the gravity uh, will pull down. Anyway, the longer that these projects will hang, uh, the more the gravity pulls. And I was having issues with uh, dowels like sinking in the middle. So the dowel that I wound up using for this is uh, a 5 8 inch uh, dowel. It's pretty big, uh, but it works a lot better in the long run. And if you don't have a dowel that is like absolutely holding its straight shape as you hang it, what will wind up happening is your quilt will start to um, sink to the center and you're not going to have a nice straight project. And to me, it was easier to just go ahead and get the bigger dowel, put that on the wall, and have the project perfectly uh, horizontal on the top, hanging as it should, than to have to come up with some mechanism to provide support on the back. There's nothing on the back of this project. Everything 
is uh, just along the top side of the uh, quilt, which you can't really see here, but as we get into the video, uh, we'll take a look at that. And without further ado, uh, let's jump in. Uh, I think what we'll do first is we'll pay a visit to my uh, Home Depot store. I love my Home Depot. I go there for a lot of stuff and I'm going to show you exactly where to find uh, the dowels uh, in uh, Home Depot where you are. Okay, let's jump in. We'll go to Home Depot first and then we'll come back here and I'll just kind of show you the process of getting this on the wall. Okay, I'll see you on the other side. What you are looking for in your hardware store is the molding section. And this is like the stuff that goes down by the floor, um, crown molding, stuff like that. We want to go to the end of this aisle down there. And you can see there's the furniture legs, like I used that on my calyx, quarter round. And then in these little cubbies, you have all of the different sizes of dowels. And I mean, there's a lot of them from very small to huge. <laughs> so there's a lot of variety here. And uh, what I like for this size project is the 5 8 inch. And you just take one out and you'll see they're fairly long. Now I didn't uh, trim mine at all. I just used it uh, completely as it is. Uh, so the tools that you're going to need, you're going to need a couple things. You, you have to have a pen or some way to mark your spot on the wall where you want to put your nails. And uh, you should have a level so that you can determine whether or not you hung your dowel straight. And then I really like these picture kits. And what we're going to use are these really uh, large nails, the big ones in the upper corner there. And then you're going to obviously need a hammer so that you can put the nail in the wall. This is just a close up of the dowel and you can see that it is 5 8 inch. These are the uh, curtain rings that I use and they're pretty big. They're about an inch and three quarters uh, diameter. Is that right? I think it's diameter. Anyway, across. <laughs> they're big. And I use them for actual curtains as well, but we're going to use them to hang our quilt. Okay, this is how I do mine. I lay the, uh, the project on the floor. You could do it on tabletop, but this was easier to film for you on the floor. And I start in the middle. And basically what I'm doing is, is I'm clipping that curtain ring to the binding along the top of the project. And I am lining up the clips with the seams. And uh, that way I know that they're evenly spaced and uh, it goes, you know, all the way across from edge to edge. Because like I told you, if you don't, uh, if you don't clip close to the edge, your project on top will start drooping like little like dog's ears, I guess. And uh, it's just not a good look. So you want to clip uh, close to the edge. And I've just found following the seam lines made this the easiest you know, way to do this and to get it all nice and uh, evenly spaced because it just looks better on the wall if they're evenly spaced. And once they're all where you want them, then I just run the dowel through those uh, rings. And that's, that's really it. Okay, so I had to remove the mirror that was up there and the old picture hangers. And then I just marked where I wanted to put my nails and I measured it out and I wound up, oh, that's the nail. <laughs> I forgot I was doing time lapse. So anyway, it's kind of a big nail. Um, and then I just put the nails in where I marked. And if it wasn't quite even, I just hammered the nail a little bit down to get it perfectly level. And that's all there is to it. Super simple. You do want the nail in the middle because it is, again, it's a large project and you want it to have uh, good support, but there it is and I love it. 
And that's all there is to hanging your wall quilts. I hope that gets you inspired to try this on your own. Truly, it's something that you can do without anybody's extra help, unless you're really unsteady and you don't feel comfortable on a stepladder. In that case, you know, have somebody over there to kind of just help you with it. But, you know, I'm comfortable on my stepladder. I don't mind, you know, going up a couple of steps to do whatever. I do recommend the level. The level will make sure that you have everything as it should be. You know, just taking that extra couple of minutes in the beginning, it gives you a much nicer finished uh, product in the end. And, you know, now that I've got the nails exactly where they need to be and I know how to get the dowel to kind of balance out on those nails, you know, every time I change out the project, which is my goal is to change it up frequently, but every time I change it, it's always going to hang straight. So that is like, that's great to me in any event. I hope that this gives you uh, some food for thought and provides you with some tools for hanging your own projects. And it doesn't have to just be a big project. You know, as time goes on, I'm going to put smaller ones on the wood on either side. So there's going to be a lot of uh, what I hope to be like just really fun stuff for you to enjoy when you tune in to the future videos. Okay, that's it for the video today. I sure hope it helped you. I hope you uh, start hanging some of your textiles around your home. Great, great decoration for your sewing room, but I put mine all over the house, so <laughs> don't let it stop you. <laughs> okay, that's it for today. I will see you in uh, the next video. And until then, happy sewing and quilting, my friends.